Welcome back to Gas Steel's Garage, y'all. Well, in today's video, we're gonna get back on that rat rod trailer. I know you guys may have forgot about that, maybe, because I haven't worked on it in about a year. And most of you guys pretty much uh, destroyed me in the comments talking about the suspension and how the suspension is gonna move. Well, we got a fix for that. So stay tuned. Now, as you guys remember, I had that custom suspension, but I need something to where this stuff is not gonna move from side to side. Like maybe we're gonna put a, uh, a Panar bar that's gonna go from right there up to the frame and keep it still. So uh, I think I got a plan with that. My plan is keeping with the tradition of this video or this series, uh, making this rat rod trailer from scrap. What we're gonna do is we're gonna grab this steel rod. That's gonna be my Panar bar. We're going to cut up some semi tractor trailer slack adjusters. We're actually going to cut that off because I want this. And I'm going to use that because I want this to be able to detach. Because I want this trailer to come up past the wheels. So, and able to take that out with, with the clevis pin because all I'm going to use is just that much you'll see now guys I want to show you a, an example of of a pan hard bar that is used in pretty much every big diesel truck rig known to man so uh, here we go here we go big old diesel truck with a pan hard bar see how it connects to the axle and then it connects to the frame and it holds it in place so it doesn't move side to side. And yes, I know you guys have been uh, blowing my comments up on having to do something like that, but I think this is just the best course of uh, action. So uh, that's what we're gonna do today. And I also wanted to show you the uh, the parts that are gonna be used and cut up to fabricate this Panhard bar, this custom Panhard bar. I'm gonna show you exactly what it is that I am using. So uh, let's go. See that? That's a slack adjuster that moves the air chamber. You see that clevis down there? That's gonna look familiar to you too. That clevis and then that slack adjuster because uh, that's what we're gonna use to uh, fabricate this panhard bar. Now what I can do is got to measure my distance on how much I want this to be so uh like that okay yeah I already measured it need about 44 inches cross cross because we're going to mount one clevis right there and then the other clevis is going to be up there like I said I just want to cut this piece off right here so I cut that off right at that those numbers right about there Yes, I don't have a vise in the shop, so next best thing is use a C-clamp to table. I'm just going to lop that off right there. Four of those pieces cut out now I need to take those measure out to this big steel rod I got or flat bar rather like I'm doing right there and then that's gonna be welded there and 
that's gonna be my panar bar to keep the axle still. Just like that. Be pretty dig on strong, I think. we need that's about the size and the notches that we need so we're gonna use this as a template of course on the next one Now the next thing we get to do is my favorite part because to weld all this stuff up together. This can be welded up just like that. Yeah, yeah, something like that. All right, that's something like what, how I want it to be. So just weld up all four sides and we'll be in business. There you go, my custom removable panar bar. Wonder how many people have tried to done, do that before. A removable panar bar. So you can adjust the height of course. All right, now that we got our removable panar bar here, now it's all a matter of getting this thing set up in the axle. So the plan is to put it in there like this, right there like that. So it's gonna be anchored there, it's gonna be anchored to the top here. So now what we gotta do is just weld in our things like that, and then we'll be able to attach this stuff. Right, this is what we got going on right there. Go weld those tabs to there. And over on the other axle right there. Sorry about the sunlight there. And then we're gonna do one right up in here.
move on to the front. Let's see. All we got to do is weld on up. Now what we gotta do is we need to shorten that, need to cut that because when it pivots, this is gonna hit the bags. I don't want that to hit the bag, so we're just gonna zip that off because it is not needed. Zip. Now, of course, I can't leave the shop uh, edges. I need to round that off, clean it up a little bit. Then I need to sand down all that rust because we're gonna paint these things too so I don't get no more rust. Okay, now I got these things fabricated how I want them. Here we go. Now we just hang them from the ceiling and paint them well since I'm painting the uh, panar bars might as well go ahead and paint my axles also and make sure my animals here don't get in the way like that one and that one and that one See what I mean? Oh, okay. we got them all fabbed up painted and looking good now we can go ahead and install these things grab clevis pins need two of them and uh let's go ahead and put this stuff in There we go. 
Now I know you guys are probably wondering why did I make that pan hard bar removable? It's very simple. That pan hard bar is a bar that is going to limit my height advantage when I'm loading the vehicles. See, let me show you. The higher that I get this thing with the bag, the more stress I'm gonna put on those joints and they could potentially pop off. So if I got something that needs to go over the tires that's a little bit higher, I can actually remove the pan hard bars and I can bring it up a little bit higher. And so that's exactly why I constructed it like that. Well, okay guys, I'm pretty much gonna wrap up this episode of Gas Diesel Garage because that weather up there doesn't look very promising for us. And I'll probably get electrocuted if I stay out here anymore because uh, it's been raining all day here in Virginia. But I urge you guys to like and subscribe. But if you guys don't want to like and subscribe, if you don't like the crap that I do, then I don't really know why I'm asking you guys. But anyways, like I said, next time you want to tune in because we'll be prepping this frame for paint. And yes, I know you're probably screaming at your TV right now saying, what in the hell are you doing painting a rat rod? You should be keeping the patina. You should be clear coating it. But no, I don't really want to do that because I want everything to match. You know, maybe my YouTube colors and stuff, maybe it'll stand out. But then again, it already is standing out because it's a rat rod trailer. But anyways, tune in next time. We'll see you next time. Peace.